fourth graders, welcome to the TV classroom. We are so excited to bring you into our TV classroom yes. family. And we are going to start doing science and yes. social emotional lessons with you. And then a little bit later, we might do a little social studies. Mm -hmm. But I'm so excited that you're here. Yes. Now, here in the TV classroom, before we begin any learning, we always check in with our zone. If you don't know what zones are, that's okay. Some of you may know, some of you might not know. It's how we think about how our brains are feeling, how our emotions are feeling, and how our bodies are feeling. Yeah. We have this chart for you to take a look at. We call it our zones of regulation chart. So, you just think to yourself, I feel, hmm, because, hmm. Take a moment to think about that and then we'll share our feelings with you and you can share your feelings with us. Mrs. Wally is showing me that she is ready because she put her finger on her nose and I know that that means that she doesn't want to interrupt, but she's ready. Go ahead, Mrs. Wally. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling greenish yellow. Oh, tell me more. Well, I'm feeling a little silly today. Oh, mm -hmm. we've had some silly things happen here before we got ready to film and so I'm a little bit silly, but I'm really excited and ready to do the learning with fourth graders today. Yes. It's going to be a really fun day. Yes. Isn't it fun to be able to get silly, but then get serious? Yes. It's important that. to be able to regulate that. That's oh. why we call zones of regulation. Yep. I can be silly, but I can still also be focused. Yes. Yes. How are you feeling today, Ms. Hassan? I'm in the green zone today. I slept really well last night. Oh, me too. For a long time. I got like nine hours of sleep. Wonderful. And I had a really good breakfast. And just thinking about how much I love coming to TV classroom every day mm -hmm. and seeing Mrs. Wally and seeing Mr. Kevin. And we get to do such fun things. It just makes me in the green zone, ready to go. I'm focused. Awesome. Mr. Kevin, how are you today? Well, thanks for asking. Uh, let me hang on a second here. Let me uh, bring that shot oh, up. Oh, there, there he is. That's Mr. Yeah, Kevin. He runs I'll, the show. And, and I'll, I'll put this up here. Hey, guys. Welcome, fourth graders. I'm feeling really good today. I'm in the green zone. Awesome. Why are yeah. you in the green zone? Well, I, too, had a great night's sleep. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I think we all had a good night's sleep because yesterday was a really tiring day. We're so tired. Our brains were really tired yes. after our work yesterday. Yes. So... All right, well. Should, should, we, we, should we introduce ourselves? I think we should. Now that we all know we're in the green zone, or ish, and we're focused, and mm -hmm. we, can, we can think and concentrate. Mm -hmm. go, yeah, go ahead and take a sip of your water there, Mrs. Wally. Wait, I can, <laughs> I can see through. It's like a ghost water bottle. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, look, you can see the crane through it, if you hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> so here in the TV classroom, so fourth cool. graders, we have what's called a green screen behind us. And Mr. Kevin can project whatever image we want. This is actually a live image outside here, our TV classroom. So this is what's actually happening here in our TV classroom. That is so cool. It is so cool. So why don't you introduce yourself? Okay. Who are you, Ms. Oslin? Well, fourth graders, my name is Mrs. Oslin, and I've been teaching here in Tacoma for a little over 10 years. I have done, uh, taught everything from kindergarten to fifth grade, but I spent most of my time in kindergarten through third grade at Bernie Elementary. So I wanna say hi to my Bernie all-star friends. Um, the last couple years I had what I call my dream job of being a collaborative teacher, which means I don't have to teach by myself. I get to teach with all my friends. Mm -hmm. And now this year we created the TV classroom. And so I have had the pleasure and the joy of co-teaching with Mrs. Wally mm -hmm. and Mr. Kevin. And I'm so excited to now get to welcome, like you said, our fourth and fifth graders into our TV classroom for the rest of the school year. It's really exciting. Yes. And I do live here in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oslin works for the Port of Tacoma. So this is our city. This is where we live. This is where we work. We love Tacoma. I'm Mrs. Wally. I originally started teaching not in Tacoma. I was in Highline School District and I taught there for six years. And then I, we moved to Tacoma, so I decided I wanted to teach in the city I mm -hmm. um, lived in. And I taught at Mary Lyon for four years. Hi, Lyon! And then I moved to Franklin when I also got my dream job, which was co-teaching with my friends at Franklin. Hey, Franklin! I missed you guys! And then I had the opportunity 
to go on a special assignment and come here and create the TV classroom. Mm -hmm. And it's been a wonderful year here. And I am also very excited to have all of you here with us. Now at home, I have a little boy. His name is Oliver and he's two. And I tell lots of stories about Oliver and the mischief he gets into. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Wally, he works for a landscaping company and he deals with water systems. So that is he cool. puts in water systems for people to irrigate their lawns in a way that's um, economic, in a way mm -hmm. that's good for our whole ecosystem and not waste water. Oh, that's and important. he does checks backflow devices. So it stops all of the dirty water from our houses getting into our drinking water. That's supply. important. Yes. So that's what Mr. Wally does. And we live here and work in Tacoma as well. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Kevin, do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Well, sure. So let me bring that shot up. Hi there, everybody. So uh, my name is Kevin, and I work in the district in technology and video. Uh, I'm a video producer, and I work for a department in the school district called the Public Information Office. And so I run our TV station and I work with Miss Wally and Miss Oslin at the TV classroom. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> we have a really great time here. We do. And I hope that you have a great time with us. Yes. Let's get on to our personal standards for when we're here at the TV classroom. Okay. Today and every day, fourth graders, we all agree to adhere to the three personal standards. Mm -hmm. These are the behaviors that we use so that everyone feels safe thinking and speaking and learning and growing. And these three personal standards are, and I'm going to encourage you to say them with me. Show, show respect. respect. Bing. Make good decisions, Bing. solve Bing. problems. Bing. You show respect when you show up on time to our lessons today and every day. You make good decisions when you have your materials ready. Like your notebook and a pencil mm -hmm. or something to write on and something to write with. Mm -hmm. Because we are going to ask you to do some writing and thinking. And that's another part of making good decisions. Mm -hmm. When we say write down your observations, you make good decisions by actually writing down your observations. Mm -hmm. And then the third personal standard is solve problems. Pro problems are going to arise, mm -hmm. either with your team, with your materials, or with your family. And we're going to empower you to solve your problems so that you can learn and grow as a reader, as a writer, as a scientist, as a mathematician, as a member of our Tacoma community. So right now, you might have the problem of, I don't have my materials. I didn't know I needed them. And that's okay. You might solve that problem by going and getting them. And then the next time that you join us here at TV Classroom, you can make the good decision to bring them with you so that that problem doesn't come up again. Yep. Fantastic. Wonderful. So our science lessons will always start with what we call an essential question. This is like a big like wonder. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out why or how something in the world around us happens. Mm -hmm. So the essential question for fourth grade today and it, the next couple of weeks is yep. going to be, what is sound and how does it get from its source to my ear? So what, we can hear it. Yeah. What is sound? How does that work? And how does it get to my ear? Hmm. We're gonna think about that as we look at some pictures and do some observations today. And this is where your notebook and pencil or whatever you have to write with is going to come in handy. We're gonna look at some pictures and you as a scientist are going to do some observations. You're gonna look at the pictures and you're gonna think about what do you see? What do you notice? What predictions do you have? And what questions do you have? You'll remember your questions might sound like who, what, where, when, how, tell me more. Or it might just start with, I have a question about, hmm. Mrs. Wally is going to be writing her observations in her notebook, and the expectation is that you are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Thinking about that essential question, what is sound, and how does it get from its source into my ear? Here's our first set of, questions, or of pictures. And if you need a reminder about how you could start your sentences, at the bottom of the slide is two mm. sentence frames. I observed, hmm, or I noticed, hmm. We encourage you to use those so that your brain doesn't get stuck on how to write the sentence. You can just get your thoughts out on paper. Don't worry about spelling. Don't worry about mechanics. 
Just get your thoughts out. Go. Is it two minutes? Yes, please. observations but you I wanted did. to talk about a problem I had oh so me. I was writing with this marker and the first time I wrote it it was really light and it was hard to read oh. and so I just grabbed another pen oh you solved that problem I solved it Didn't I even... thought about we just talked about solving problems and that's a problem you might have maybe your pencil breaks or maybe oh yeah your marker runs out and what are you gonna do you still have to be making observations mm -hmm. can't let that problem make no. it so you don't learn nope yeah okay oh, nice so I noticed a very big speaker I saw that too. Mm -hmm. And I observed the child playing some kind of flute or instrument. Mm -hmm. And I observed another child hitting something. And I was kind of wondering what the connection was between those children playing those things mm -hmm. and hitting those things and a speaker. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what that connection was. Yeah. Did strong, you make any observations? observations? Well, I was looking at the speaker and it reminded me of a speaker that we have at my house. And mm. when we listen to music, Mm -hmm. that the sound comes out of the speaker. So mm -hmm. the speaker is the source of the sound. Uh, and then I, th I think that's a recorder that that child is playing, mm -hmm. which I know our fifth graders get. Oh, right? I played they, it in fourth grade. I did too. I can still play hot cross buns. Me too, and Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Those skills go with you, friends. Uh, so I was just thinking about music and how music can be a source of sound. Yeah, it can, can't yeah. it? It's one of my favorite sources of sound. I agree. I really love music. Yeah. Let's take a look at the next set of All pictures. All right, here we go. We're going to make more observations. Hmm. Mm. Let's do two minutes on this one. Okay. I observed. Hmm? I noticed. Or hmm. I wonder.
Miss Awesome, what were you noticing? So I saw that picture and it was like the cut away of mm -hmm. the neck. And so then I started touching my own neck, thinking about, and now that I'm doing it again and I'm talking, I can feel movement in my neck while I talk. Mm. That's interesting. Let's all if try you that. Do that. Yeah. Oh, Put your yeah. hands here. Yeah, I can feel it. Not only can I feel muscles, but I feel tiny movements. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Huh. That must be the source of the sound of my voice. You know, I had this thing. I wonder if the thing inside our necks help us make sound. I'm guessing yes. That's what I was thinking. But, but how? I don't know. Like, I know I'm yeah. making sound, but how does it work? How does it work? And how is it that you can hear it and I can hear it? But then we can feel it. But why can we feel it? I don't know. I'm curious. I'm Do you have any curious. ideas at home? Hmm. I also noticed that the picture, there was like, there was. Yes. And then that other student or child looks like they're like, Squeak! Yay! right? Yeah. And I wonder how we make that happen with this right here. Inside. Like different volumes? I can you know, I have this condition called vocal cord dysfunction. Yeah. And it's where my vocal cords like snap really tight and yeah. it makes it hard to breathe. And I know that when that happens, I make a really funny like wheezing sound and I can't talk very well. Interesting. It's like they get really tight. Yeah. So like air movement has to do with speaking? Like Maybe. how you breathe? Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Let's take a look at the next picture. This one we'll just okay. do one minute one on. Minute. Yeah. Hmm. For sound. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I have a lot of questions about this one. Ooh, me too. First thing I, I thought was why yeah. a picture of whales. I know you're confu we confused. And then I thought, Finding Nemo, Dory. Oh, yeah. And they make sounds. Yes. So I'm wondering how, because they're in the water. I know. So I know, like, if I don't breathe, I can't make sound. Right. I was thinking, I remember being young and we had a pool and I, we would go underwater and we would scream as loud as we could, uh -huh. but it didn't sound that loud underwater oh. like it did above water. You're right. So I was thinking about how sound gets from its source to my ear and it's different if you're underwater. I wonder if water changes the way sound moves. And then I was thinking... Looking at the canyon. <laughs> I had a thought for this. Okay, one you tell me. You tell me your well, thought. Oliver's learn, just learned this. When it snowed a few weeks ago, I opened the front door. It was late at night. And you know when it snows, how it's super quiet. quiet. Mm -hmm. And he went, oh, and he could hear the echo. Yes. And he had never heard his voice echo before. And so now he was like so excited, and he was like screaming. And I had to bring him inside and go. The whole neighborhood does not want to hear you <laughs> at eight thirty at night screaming. <laughs> but now every time the door opens, he runs and tries to see if it echoes. Yeah. And sometimes it echoes more than others. And I'm thinking about that Grand Canyon mm. picture mm -hmm. and how I know that when you're like in a big canyon, it echoes. But why? And it's kind of a fun thing. I think if you go to any canyon ever, you will see someone going echo. Echo, echo mm -hmm. over the side. <laughs> yeah. But how does that sound go to our ear? And how does it like go out but then come, come back? back and out and back and out and back and you only did it once? I know. Huh. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kevin? I was just going to say that you want to be careful when you're yelling outside to make an echo because I was with a friend, did that in Mount Rainier once, mm -hmm. and uh, we were, what we were what we called it was bouncing 
echoes off of the canyon wall mm -hmm. uh, of the area where we were. And, and soon we had uh, rescue people showing up oh. because they thought we were in trouble. <laughs> oh, I never even thought of that. Yeah. Wow, your voice carried really far to someone else's ear. It did. How did that How did happen? that happen? <laughs> Whoa. That's wild. Okay, so we're gonna use some big science words, Mr. Kevin. Okay, hang on a second here. He's gonna turn on his microphone, here he goes. Big science words! It's that segment in our show where we get to talk about big, big science, science words. words. Okay, let's look at our word for today. Vibration. Let's put the syllables. Okay, here we go. Vibration. How many syllables, fourth graders? Three. Three. How many vowel sounds? Three. Three. Every syllable has a vowel sound. Mm -hmm. Vibration. Hmm. What do you think it means? Where have you heard it before? Maybe you know what it means. Oh. Maybe you've experienced it before. Mm. What is vibration? Hmm. What do you think, Miss Awesome? What do you think vibration is? I was thinking that like vibration is something that shakes. Yeah, I'm thinking like an earthquake. Yes. Right? That's kind of what I was thinking. That's shaking. But how does something shaking have anything to do with how sound gets to my ear? Huh. Huh. Hmm. Ooh. That's interesting. Interesting. I feel something shaking in my... I wonder if I make the P sound. But then I make the D sound. Duh. 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 Huh? Duh. That's different. If I whisper, if I whisper, what I don't really feel it. Nothing's moving. No. When I turn my voice on... Then I can feel it. Uh, oh. And I... I won't yell because I don't want to hurt Mr. Kevin's ears. Yeah, he asked us not to yell. We Yesterday when we were getting really excited, it was a little loud. Take it down a notch, teachers, That's what right. he said. Yep. So the final meaning of vibration is a fast movement back and forth. And part of what we're going to do for this all is my favorite of our part science of our learning, lesson. I know, is we use movements. And every time we say that word vibration, you are gonna say it back, say the definition, and do, do the, the movement. movement. And it's gonna look like this. Mrs. Wally's gonna say the word, and then I will do your part. Vibration. Vibration. A fast movement back and forth. Okay, so if we say, Vibrate. I feel my neck's vibration, you say vibration, vibration. a, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And we kind of play this game up here where we try to like sneak it in and get it past you. And then we're like vibration. And we, this whole time we kind of play this game yes. about trying to catch every time we yes. say the word vibration. Vibration, a fast, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And I got into, I got tricked a lot yesterday. Yeah, I did too. It was super fun. But we won't get tricked today, I promise. Our sentence today is, I can feel the vibration from a drum Vibration, a, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. So if we're saying I can feel a vibration from a drum, vibration, vibration a, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth, forth, that means we can actually feel it. Like when you hit it, you can oh. feel it. And I can tell you that I'm a percussionist. Yes, you are. And I will tell you that when I play for a really long time with my drumsticks, yeah. my hands start to hurt. <gasps> and the reason my hands start to hurt is because every time I hit the drum, I can feel that vibration up my drumstick. Vibration. A fast, a fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And I can feel it going all the way up. And it's really started to hurt my wrists. So oh. I'd have to take breaks when I was doing a lot of playing. Like yeah. when I was in marching band playing the bass drum. Yeah. I'd have to take breaks because my hands would get really tired from feeling all that vibration. Vibration. A, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And I'd feel it moving. And so actually someone got really smart and they made drumsticks that have a rubber core in the middle. Oh. So it made the vibration less intense. Vibration, a, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. Isn't that cool? That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So now that we've done some observation charts, we've thought about our essential question, which is how does a sound get from its source to my ear? We have learned about the word vibration. Vibration, vibration a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. We're gonna think about everything that we think we know about vibration. Vibration, vibration a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and forth. forth. 
And I know that some of you have probably seen a chart where at school mm -hmm. where it says, I know hmm about hmm. Well, this chart is different. It is. Those are kind of like the KWL charts. Yes. You might like do as a whole class and think about what you know and what you want to know yep. and then what you learned. A little different here. Can you tell us why? Yes. It says, I think, think. I know. Mm. And that's because as scientists, we're always open to the idea that we're either going to, as we learn and do experiments, we're either going to confirm our thinking and say, yes, that's what I thought, or we might have to change our thinking with new or different information. I've given this example a lot, mm -hmm. but earlier on in the pandemic, they said you just need some kind of cloth face mm -hmm. covering. It can be one layer, it can be two, it can be five, mm -hmm. whatever's comfortable for you, just something. And recently they came out and they changed their recommendation. Mm -hmm. They said, we've done studies, and what we have found is that the cloth covering you have over your mouth needs to be two Ooh, or like, more mm -hmm. layers. That's an example of they thought they knew it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Then with research and understanding and pushing on each other's thinking, mm -hmm. they found out that actually it needs to be two or more. Mm -hmm. That's the scientific process. Mm -hmm. And as scientists, we need to be open to that. We can't mm -hmm. just say, nope, that's what I know, and then stop asking questions. Because I thought it this one time, it means it's true all the time. Well, variables change mm -hmm. and things change. things change. And so we have to be flexible as scientists and know mm -hmm. that sometimes more accurate information comes out. Yes. So. so that's why you are going to write what I think I know about vibration. Vibration, vibration a fast, fast movement, movement back and, and forth. forth. It might sound like a sentence that says, I think I know about what I think I know about vibration is hmm. Or based on hmm, I think I know hmm. Or you could even write, I think I know vibration is mm -hmm. vibration, vibration, a, a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. Then on the other side of that T-chart, you're going to write what I want to learn about vibration. Vibration, vibration a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and forth. forth. And I promise that we won't do this all the time with the vibration thing. They we're just saying it a lot right now. Because we want that word really in Really in head. your head. But as we, over the next few days... It'll be less saying the word, but That's true. it's good. It gets it in your head. That's true. All right. So we're going to give you some think time and you are going to be in your mm. notebook writing down what you think you know and what you want, want to, to learn. What you want to learn. Okay. Are you ready? We're going to give you one minute. One minute. Did. Wonderful. Yeah. What did you think you know? Well, I was thinking about our essential question, how does sound get from its source to my ear? And then I was thinking about the picture that showed our vocal cords. And I think I know that vibration has to do with how sounds are made. Vibration. A fast fast movement, movement back and forth. We you know it's interesting. I wrote, I think I know vibration vibration, a fast, a fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth, forth, causes my vocal cords to make sound. Oh, we, we have very similar very thinking. Very similar thinking. But then I said, I want to learn how it travels from there into someone's eardrum and then how they're able to hear it. Yeah. Like, that's the part I'm not sure. Yeah. Which is our essential question. So right. we'll probably answer that in the next couple I days. I think we will. Yeah. What, what did you want to learn? 
I was wondering about, again, the whale underwater and how mm. different like water or tra sa how sound travels and how, depending on what it's traveling through, how it can change the sound. Oh, that's a really, you know, that makes me think about our experiment we're gonna do next time. Get you excited. don't wanna miss it. You do not wanna miss it. It has something to do with sound traveling through different mediums. It might get a little messy. I love it's it. It's gonna be so fun. Okay, okay. Let's, so we've learned yep. a big science word. We've done some observations. Mm -hmm. We've thought about what we know. We know what we want to learn. Now, Mrs. Wally is going to do what is called an input chart. And this is where she's going to teach us more about sound energy. And I'm gonna do it kind of by a story, which is kind of fun. So I just talked to you about it. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's take a look, friends. Oh, look. You can kind of see some pencil here on my paper. And I will let you know that I sketched this out ahead of time because I wanted to make sure that I was able to accurately represent for you. Mm -hmm. We learned yesterday what happens when I don't, when I miss something mm -hmm. to sketch. There was a little rabbit and I forgot to sketch it. And we all learned why I sketch ahead of time because <laughs> it didn't look like a rabbit when I tried. So we are going to talk today about sound energy. Okay, so what is sound energy? Well, sound energy is a type of energy, whoo, a type of energy made by vibrations. Vibrations, a fast movement back and forth. Huh, well, well then that means that those vibrations are causing the sounds in our vocal cords. Vibrations, a fast movement back and forth. When an object vibrates. Vibration, a fast movement <laughs> back and forth. It causes movement in the air particles. Wait a minute. Movement in the air, air particles. particles. Uh -huh. I wonder what that means. Any ideas, friends? So not only are the vocal cords moving, the air around it is moving. You know, I'm kind of thinking about when it's windy and the wind is blowing, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't see it, but you can feel, feel it. it. Mm -hmm. That must mean the air particles are moving. Mm -hmm. And I also know that when the wind blows really hard, I can you hear, hear it. it. It goes, <gasps> I wonder if the air particles are vibrating when the wind blows really hard. Vibration, when that air fast moves. movement back and forth. Huh. Oh. So now I wanna talk about something called pitch. Everyone say pitch. Pitch. Pitch is how high or low a sound is. So here's the ear. I'm gonna show you this ear, here it is. And depending on the pitch, how high or low a sound is, must determine how fast or slow the vibration is. Vibration, a fast movement back and, and forth. And that then gets put into our ear because the air, air particles, particles are, are moving, moving in our ear, moves our eardrum, and then we can hear it. That is so interesting. Whoa. So it's all these particles we can't even see moving at different rates mm -hmm. to be high or low sounds. Mm -hmm. And then we hear them differently. That's wild. This movement in the air of the particles moving mm -hmm. has a name. You ready? Yes. Sound waves. Waves like water waves? Yes, it looks like waves. Nice. When vibrations. Vibration, a fast movement back and forth. Are slow. What do you think happens? 
What do you think the wave is gonna look like if the vibration is slow? Ooh, she's like, mm. it looks like this. We call that low frequency. It's another great word. Frequency, pitch. These are great words. Mm -hmm. When vibrations are fast. Vibration, a fast movement back and forth. What do you think it looks like? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about like your heart beating. Yes. When it goes slow, it's not as many. And then when it goes yeah. fast, it's like. There's do, 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 more do, 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 time do, do. in between each beat. I wonder if they use vibrations to check your heartbeat. Vibration, a fast movement back and forth. I don't know. It would seem like they would. Like I can feel my heartbeat moving. Uh huh. Right now it's moving slowly. And like when they listen to it through a stethoscope, yes. they can hear it. Yes. Yes. So it must be vibration. Vibration, a fast, a fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And this is what it looks like. Now this is not a scientific drawing. I'm just sketching. Mm -hmm. And these we call high frequency. Hmm. Let's do a little predicting of what frequency means then. If this is low frequency and this is high frequency, just some thinking. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about it. I just want you to think about it. So that's kind of how sound energy works. There's vibrations in air particles. Vibration, a fast movement back and forth. Or a slow movement back and forth, I guess. Slow movement back and forth. And how fast or slow those vibrations are determines how the, the waves are, mm -hmm. which determines if it's going to be a low or, or a high, high sound. Interesting. Low pitch or high pitch. That is, Isn't that cool? That is so interesting. Now, we will tell you that we're going to give you some rhyming assignments after some of our lessons. Yes. And if you, at the end of the show, we're going to tell you how you can send them to us. Mm -hmm. And if you send them to us, mm -hmm. everyone who sends them to us will get put in a drawing. And Mr. Kevin, Mrs. Wally, Ms. Oslin, we will all autograph this picture, laminate it, and send it to the person's name we draw. We will. Which will be so fun. So cool. So. Because you know you want this poster to decorate your bedroom. Uh -huh. And you'll have our autographs which some people might think is cool. Pretty cool. Some people might not think is cool, but that's okay. We're going to sing a little song, song. together yes. to help us remember and learn about sound. Yes. So, Mr. Kevin, can you pull up the lyrics for us? Yeah. So it's called Sounds Here, Sounds There. Yes. Would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Would or do you we go, do it all together? I think we do this one all together. Oh, perfect. Yes. So let's read the blue words together. Here we go. Sounds, sounds here, here, sounds, sounds there. there. Sounds, sounds, sounds everywhere. everywhere. Ready? Let's do the next one. Okay. Loud, Loud sounds, sounds created strongly. strongly. Soft sounds created gently. High pitch, pitch sounds created vibrate quickly. Low pitch sounds vibrate slowly. Sounds from a band, sounds in nature, sounds in our world, and sounds from me. Sounds here, sounds there, sounds, sounds everywhere. Sounds, sounds, sounds. It's kind of like a little chant. It is. And it, I helps love it. Us, it helps us say all of those words that I noticed were on your chart. Yes. Helps us Frequency, say those pitch. Over, over and over. And wow. I love that they use the word vibrate. Yes. Vibration. vibration a fast, fast movement, movement back, back and, and forth. And we've also learned it can be, can be slow. slower, fast movement. So maybe movement. it's just a, a movement, movement back, back and forth. forth. Mm -hmm. I think we should revise our definition. We definitely. Do you see how we thought we knew mm -hmm. what that vibration meant? Vibration, but as we're talking a movement more about back it. And forth. We're, we're realizing that thinking. we're changing our thinking a little bit, mm -hmm. that it's not just the fast movement, it can be any movement back and forth, just the intensity of the vibration changes. Yeah, interesting. So, did we start, I don't think we've answered this question. No, 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 no. no. But I think we're starting to get a better understanding yeah. of what, what is, is sound. sound. And, and how does it how get it, from the source yeah, to, to our my ear. ear so we can hear it. Has to do with air particles I learned from Mrs. Wally today. Yeah, so something to do with the air particles and vibrations. Mm -hmm. Vibrations, a, a movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. And for sound, it's air particles. Mm. Today, your writing assignment is to write about everything that you think you know about vibration. 
vibration, a, a movement, movement back, back and, and forth. forth. You might even consider writing about how your thinking has changed during today's lesson. Yes. You can send it to us here at our TV classroom. Mr. Kevin, can you tell our fourth graders how to send us their work? Absolutely. Fourth graders, head to your computer, otherwise known as an email machine, mm -hmm. and type in tvclassroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. You can take a snapshot of what you want to send us and put it in an email as an attachment, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can send it the old-fashioned way via the mail. Put a stamp on an envelope, send it to TV Classroom 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Thank All right, you, friends, Mr. Kevin. There's one more thing we always do here at the TV Classroom. We start with our zones. And we end with our affirmation. Our affirmation is when we say positive self-talk about ourselves mm -hmm. before we go off to do our independent work. And this is really, really important because you know what's really easy is to do negative self-talk. It's so easy. It's so easy. We do it all the time without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. We need to get into the habit of having positive self-talk, which is where yes. we say the good things inside of us mm -hmm. because there's good things inside of all of us. There are. Today, our affirmation is, I am a scientist. Because you, you are, are, you made observations, mm -hmm. you connected to what you think you know, you ask questions. Starting to draw conclusions Starting about to what draw you think you know. Conclusions, absolutely. So everyone, let's take a deep breath together. And say our affirmation. I, I am, am a scientist. scientist. Excellent job today, fourth graders. We hope you have a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you back here next time in our TV classroom. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.